Well, hello, boys and girls. This is Daniel for Rock the JVM, and in this video, we are going to make the distinction between null, nothing, none, nil, and unit in Scala as representations of the absence of meaningful values. These terms represent different things, and by the end of this video, you will know which to use when. Now, this video will be pretty elementary for the beginner Scala programmer who are, uh, is just getting started with Scala, preferably from another programming language, because I'm going to make some references to some other programming topics that you may have seen before. As always, I will recommend that you use the code in this video in your own text editor and validate what I'm going to tell you in this video. And whenever you need to get back to these terms and refresh your memory, just refer back to this video or to its written form at rockthejvm.com forward slash blog, and you will find the link in the description of this video. So that being said, let's get back to our code editor. So there are lots of terms to express the lack of meaningful values in Scala. So in this piece of code, I'm going to run you through the different versions of that. And we're going to make the distinction between all these terms and teach you when to use each. So I'm going to start with the null reference which is probably the most familiar. If you come to Scala from another programming language, perhaps Java or some other uh, language that has a null reference, um, you're probably familiar with the null reference. It's used to represent an absent value. So if I define an absent string of type string, and on the right hand side, I put null, you've surely seen this kind of expression before. And you've surely dealt with your own set of null access exceptions. The null reference has the property that it has no fields and no methods. So if I try an absent string dot length, and if I try to run this program, so if I right click and run this, we will get to the famous null pointer exception that you may have seen in Java or other JVM languages. So this one is easy and I'm not gonna spend too much time stressing this out, but we are going to contrast this null reference with other concepts. And the second concept that I'm going to introduce is null with a capital N. Now in Scala, the null reference, this guy, belongs to its own distinct type, which is called null with a capital N. So if I define a value, let's call this the null reference of type null with a capital N, the only value that you can put in on the right hand side is the null reference with a lowercase n. So the null type has no methods, no fields, cannot be extended or instantiated, and the only possible value of the null type with a capital N is the null value with a lowercase n. Now, because the null type doesn't have any fields or methods and it cannot be extended or instantiated, the null type by itself is pretty boring. Now, the only interesting aspect of null, the type, is that it quote unquote extends all reference types. By that, we mean that we can successfully use null as a replacement for any reference type. So let me give an example. If I define a value, let's call this no string of type string, I can use as a replacement the null reference. If I define a value, let's call this no person, given I have a person class, and uh, let me define a class person. So if I define a person class as the null reference, then this is also a valid replacement for the person custom type that I've defined. If I use a value, let's call this no list, which is a composite type like list int, I can also use the null reference as a replacement. So from the point of view of subtyping, the type null with a capital N is a proper subtype for all these reference types that I've exemplified here, string, person, and list of in, but it's also applicable for any reference type. And in Scala, the reference type hierarchy starts with any ref, and then we have all reference types, and then we have the null type at the bottom. So null type extends or is a subtype of all the possible reference type in this hierarchy. Now, a common question is how can null, the capital case null, uh, be a proper subtype for all the reference types since Scala offers a single class inheritance model? How is null a proper subtype of person? Now, the answer is that null is treated, null has, special 
treatment by the compiler. So the compiler establishes that null is a proper extension or a proper subtype of all the reference types. There is no need for us as programmers to intervene related to this hierarchy. Cool, so that was the null type with a capital case N. The next concept that I'm going to uh, talk about is nil, which is very similar to null in how, it, how it's written and how it sounds, but it means a totally different thing. Nil means an empty list. So if I define an empty list of type list int, for example, is equal to nil. Nil is an object that is a singleton object that can be attributed to any empty list. So nil is an object, but nil, unlike null, is a proper value. So it has fields and methods. For example, I can print line, for example, nil.length, or I can call some other methods on nil. So nil is a proper value. So let me put this app in the code. So null is the type of the null reference. Nil is the empty list. And uh, I'm going to continue with the concept. So the empty list, as you can probably tell, is completely different in uh, both definition, scope, and implementation than the null reference and the null type. The next concept that I'm going to introduce is none, which is also um, a way of expressing an absent value. Now, truth be told, we very rarely use the null reference in Scala, in a good Scala code, because using null incentivizes us to write imperative Java-style defensive code. I can't tell you how many null checks I've seen in Java code, but we don't want that in Scala. We want to treat the absence of value as a regular value. So instead of null, we use options. So none is a subtype of options, which we're going to talk about in another video. Now, options, in short, they allow and force us to write clearer and more concise code, which is harder to fail. And the two kinds of instances that we can use for options are some and none. Let me give you some examples. I'm going to define an absent int of type option int. Now, option int behaves much like a list of int, except that an option may contain at most a single value. And I'm going to use none to represent that this option int is empty, that it, it doesn't contain any value. If I want to um, create a non-empty option, let's call this a present int of type option int, I'm going to use sum with sub value, so I can use sum42. Sum is a subtype of option, and none is also a subtype of option in much the same style as nil is a subtype of list, all right? So we use none as a regular value to process the absence of meaningful values. This may be a little abstract, but with a little bit of Scala experience, these will prove natural to you. Th these will become second nature. So we use none to represent the absence of values. And uh, unlike null, none is a regular value, meaning it has fields and methods. So if I do print line an absent int dot is empty, this will be true, and it won't uh, throw a null pointer exception as we did earlier. So I'm going to comment this out, and this will be an error. All right, so um, if I run this application, we are, are going to see true here in the console. So notice that none is a regular value, meaning it has fields and methods. Good, now I'm going to uh, talk about another concept, which is unit. Now, thankfully, unit will prove a little clearer, although the name is uh, not very inspired, to be honest. But one of the very first things we learn as Scala programmers coming from another language is how to declare methods returning void. Now, the equivalent of void in other languages is this unit type. So if I define a method, let's call this a unit returning method, which returns unit equals, and um, expressions returning unit are side effects, meaning that we either display something on screen or write something to a file or print something to a console. So if I do print line, I'm starting 
to get the difference, this expression doesn't return any meaningful value. It prints something on screen, but doesn't return any meaningful value. And the absence of a meaningful value is denoted by this unit type. The only value of this unit type is this little token, parenthesis, parenthesis. So this parenthesis, parenthesis is the value that this expression will return. Notice that this value doesn't really mean much. It doesn't really do anything, but it is a regular value, unlike null, all right? So unit is the type of void returning functions, and uh, we use unit to write um, methods and functions that only do something, but they don't return any meaningful thing. So I'm going to put this at five. And the final thing that I'm going to talk about is nothing, which is a totally different thing type. So uh, this is basically the mother of nothingness. We've talked about nothing before in another video, which I'm going to link into this video and into the description as well. So we won't spend too much time here, but basically nothing is the type of no value at all. So no value at all means not unit, not nil, not none, not even null, nothing at all. So nothing is a type which has no fields, has no methods, cannot be instantiated, cannot be extended, and has no value at all. So the only expressions that can return the type nothing is throwing exceptions. So I'm going to define nothing int of type int as throw new runtime exception and I'm going to uh, put in a message here, no int or something like that. So the expression of throwing an exception is a non-standard code flow. So this will return nothing. It's not unit, all right? So it's not the unit value, it's nothing at all because the program will terminate if I run this program. So if I run this program as it is, then I'm going to uh, have this runtime exception with no int, all right? So the expression of throwing exceptions will return nothing. But as you can see here, I've declared a value of type int and on the right hand side, I have an expression which returns nothing. And uh, much the same as null, nothing can be used as a replacement for any type. So I'm going to use nothing string of type string as throw new runtime exception, and I'm going to use another message here. This also returns nothing. So notice that nothing is also a replacement for any possible type. Now the difference between nothing and null is the fact that null is a replacement for reference types. So this is a replacement for all reference types. And reference types include string, list, custom classes, and basically every other custom data type that we define ourselves. Whereas nothing is a replacement for any type at all, including the primitive types like int. All right. So basically nothing sits at the bottom of the type hierarchy in Scala. In the same style as null, nothing has a special treatment by the compiler. So the compiler already knows that whatever type you define, nothing is a subtype of that. For more details, we have a video dedicated to nothing in uh, the description attached to this video. All right, so I hope this was useful. I'm Daniel, and you can find this article at rockthejvm.com forward slash blog in written form, and you can follow me on Twitter and LinkedIn with the links in the description attached to this video. Now, I'm dying for feedback, so please leave yours in the comments, and if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe, because more videos like this will be coming soon. Until next time, thank you for watching. <music>